Hello guys, and welcome to the Battle of the Fablets. Introducing on one side, the new iPhone 6 Plus against the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Let's do that into the phablet phone space. And they definitely do have lots of stiff competition because Samsung has basically owned this space for a long time with the Note lineup. And Samsung has just updated the line a few days ahead of the iPhone 6 announcement with the new Samsung Galaxy Note 4. And this is a fantastic phone, the best one Samsung has made as of now. And let's see how the iPhone 6 stacks up against it. So, because it is a phablet, let's begin with the display size. So the iPhone 6 has a size of 5.5 inches. Meanwhile, the Note has a display size of 5.7 inches. So the Note is 0.2 inches above that of the iPhone 6, and that is definitely going to come in handy while watching movies, playing games, browsing the web, and so on. But now let's move on to the resolution of these phones. So the iPhone 6 has a panel that is 1920 by 1080p, giving it a pixel density of 401, which is definitely not bad. But when looking at the Note, which is this phone's competition, it is not even close because the Note's panel is 2560 by 1440, giving it a massive pixel density of 515. So I think we can easily say that the Note 4 is the best phablet when it comes to the display, both in size and resolution. And once again, that is a big deal because when it comes to phablets, the biggest selling point of the phone is the display because that's why you're buying a phablet and the Note does pull ahead in this section. So next up is the build quality of these phones. And in the past, this would be an easy win for the iPhone over a Samsung phone because for a long time, Samsung phones have always been made out of plastic. And you guys know all the iPhones, including the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, have an extremely nice full aluminum unibody design. But Samsung has finally changed things up with this new Note because it actually does implement actual metal going around the side of the phone making the phone feel a lot more valuable in the hand, and that is definitely a good thing. Although the back of the Note still is that fake leather plastic design, meanwhile the iPhone 6 is a complete aluminum body, but the plastic back does have some advantages, because one, you can replace the battery unit, and it also gives you access to the expandable SD card on the inside, allowing you to expand the storage on the phone up to 128 gigabytes, and none of this can be found on the iPhone 6. So when it comes to the build quality, I'm going to have to say that this is a tie because yes, the iPhone 6 does have the full aluminum body, but the Note does implement metal on the sides, and it does give you full access to the inside of the phone, allowing you, like I said, to take out the battery, expand the storage on the phone, and so on. And that's why I'm saying that it is a tie when it comes to the build of these phones. So next up is the camera unit on these phones. So the iPhone 6 has a new 8 megapixel camera on the back that goes down to f2.2 and it does implement a new sensor behind the glass that should give you, combined with the new Apple A8 chip, good looking photos. When it comes to video functionality, it can film in 1920 by 1080p, so full 1080p video, and that is at 60 frames a second, which is definitely good. It can also do slow motion 720p video at 240 frames a second, allowing you to have extremely slow motion video. And lastly, the iPhone 6 Plus has optical image stabilization, and that helps to keep the camera still while taking photos and video. And it also has a 1.2 megapixel selfie taken machine. Now moving back to the Note, this is equipped with a Sony made 16 megapixel lens, which is going to give you fantastic high resolution photos and videos. And speaking of video, this is where the Note really pulls ahead of the iPhone 6 Plus because it can film in full 4K resolution. And this means that it can film in 2160p in comparison to the iPhone 6 Plus that can only do 1080p. And it does film this in 30 frames a second, but it can also do 1080p video at 60 frames a second. So same as the iPhone 6. And just like the iPhone 6 Plus, this does have optical image stabilization built into the phone to keep the camera still while taking photos and videos. And it also has a 3.7 megapixel selfie taken machine up front with a wide angle lens. So to conclude this section, I think it's obvious that the Note does have a clear advantage. 
Now moving on to the brains of the phone, the iPhone 6 Plus has the new Apple A8 chip on the inside, which is a 64-bit chip, which is supposed to be about twice as fast as the iPhone 5S. Meanwhile, the Note has the newest Snapdragon 805 CPU, clocked in at 2.7 GHz, and is a quad-core CPU. And it also has 3 GB of RAM, backing that up. At the time of this video, we don't know exactly how much RAM the iPhone 6 Plus is going to have, but we can safely say that it's going to be between 1 and 2 GB of RAM. But you guys want to know, what exactly does all that mean? So in the past, basically all the iPhones and the Samsung phones have been about even when it comes to speed, even though the specs are quite different. And that is what I expect these phones to be like. So even though they have extremely different chipsets, the overall speed is going to be about the same. Now the last thing that I want to talk about is the battery capacity on these phones, because all of the things I just talked about is completely useless if your phone is dead. So the iPhone 6 Plus has a battery capacity of 2915 milliamps, which is definitely a high capacity, but in the note the battery capacity is 3220 milliamps, and that is a difference of about 300 milliamps, and honestly speaking, that definitely can make a big impact on the battery life of the phone. So once again, the note does have the advantage. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. Also, like the video if you guys enjoyed and subscribe to the channel. I do realize that I skipped over some small specs, like NFC for example. Both of these phones have NFC and can do mobile payments. The Note uses Google Wallet and the iPhone uses Apple Pay. But I'm done, so I'll see you fine people in the next one. Peace out and God bless. Now, today we're looking at the Arcos Helium 4G smartphone range. There are 4.5 and 5 inch variants, but here we're unboxing the 5 inch version, so the Arcos 50 Helium 4G. Now, the Helium range supports the latest 4G LTE Category 4 networks, so giving you download speeds up to the full 150 megabits per second. Looking on the left edge of the device, we've got the volume rocker, and on the other side, the power button, microphone and micro USB for charging and data on the bottom, and 3.5mm jack for headphones or hands-free kit on the top. On the back, we've got an 8 megapixel camera with LED flash, and on the front, a 2 megapixel camera. On taking off the back cover, there's the 2000 milliamp replaceable battery, the slot for the micro SIM card, and the slot for the micro SD card. Arcos Helium smartphones run pure Android 4.3 Jelly Bean without any overlays, so showing Android exactly as Google intended it. The 1.2 GHz quad core processor packs plenty of power for your apps and games. Here we've got GT Racing 2 from Gameloft running, looking excellent on that 1280 x 720 HD IPS screen. Of course, it's an Arcos device, so it has all of the Arcos media apps pre-installed. Perfect for playing those full HD videos, looking amazing on that 5-inch screen with excellent colours, brilliant brightness and perfect viewing angles. So, there you have it. The Arcos 50 Helium 4G, available the 14th of April at €199 Euros, or your regional equivalent from Arcos.com.